I'll go to Senator Rennick. Uh, I, uh, my question is for uh, Minister Wong, uh, and I'd like to raise the issue of the Lippington Triangle audit. Uh, as you know, uh, the Auditor General ended up with egg on his face for claiming that the land was worth $3 million when it was worth $30 million. Um, now, I've asked the Auditor General previously in estimates for copies of the work papers in regards to that uh, audit, and you remember that well because you spent two hours interrogating the Infrastructure Department and are at one morning. I think you, 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 th you probably think my memory is better than it actually is, Senator Rennick, but <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, my concern is, is that the Auditor-General won't release the work papers um, from that uh, audit, and given that he was so far out and failed to apply the proper accounting, accounting standards, I'd like to know what the Prime Minister will do about that in the name of transparency, <clears throat> number one. And number two is I'd like to know whether or not the Prime Minister has ever had a relationship with the Auditor General, given that they were both Labor staffers going back to the late 80s. Um, Senator Rennick. The first is that the Auditor General uh, is appearing, I think, at 3.50. Well, it will be a bit later because we've got the I, office. I accept that. But Just I, if I, I can, yeah. please. Um, so obviously you can put these questions directly to the Auditor General. Um, uh, I, um, you know, you've made a number of assertions. Um, uh, I, had, I didn't know if, if I don't know if they're true about the Auditor General's history. I well, he's an ex-Labor staff from oh, the well, late I 80s. Didn't, I don't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is. I, well he is. that's According not until you said that that was something. Yeah. There was never something that I have be, have been aware of. My, my understanding he is. is at he Stuart is, West. and it's unfortunate that you are making the imputation that you are. Uh, it's an independent statutory office. He was appointed by your yeah, government. Yeah, I accept that. Yeah. Uh, so, if there is some imputation about his um, professionalism, um, I. I I'd, I'd ask you to consider carefully whether that's an appropriate assertion. Well, well it is, um, because I'll, I'll quote double ASB 13, well, Accounting well, Standard uh, for Fair it, Value, paragraph 27 and 29 says you value land at best use. Okay. And he didn't do that in the audit, and that became a big political uh, issue, of which you spent two hours prosecuting in RAT. Okay, so I, I'm just holding you to the same standards that you tried to hold the Morrison government to. Well, I, I, my recollection was I went to RAT, this is a couple of years ago now? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've asked a lot of questions over, <laughs> over yeah, the no, years, I accept yeah, no, um, yeah. and, and asked questions about um, a purchase, which I think, from memory, the secretary himself was agreed there were concerns about. Um, uh, you're now talking about the auditor, the the auditor general's report. Yeah, um, I have issues around the, the professional. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Well, well standards, if uh, I'm not in a position to have an argument with you about an accounting standard, but I'm sure uh, you know that's something you could put to the audit office. Oh, I have. Right. But what's my issue so what's now my is, what's the question? Well, my to issue me? is is that he won't release the work papers around that audit, and I want to oh. know why he got the zoning wrong and why he valued well, it wrong. He's an independent. Think, yeah, he's an independent officer. Well, he's an independent statutory officer, and. You know, he, uh, whoever holds that office makes the judgments they make about what de about their work, and about you know what they what what is included or not included in public reports. It's not a political question. Okay. Well, well how can the Australian people have confidence in the impartiality, impartiality of of the Auditor General when he's clearly got something wrong by by a factor of ninety percent, right? He fails to disclose work papers. Okay, in my view that they're an independent statutory body, that means they're, who, who are they accountable to? My understanding of it is that these guys are ultimately reportable, reportable to the Prime Minister's office, and in the name of transparency... Yeah. Did you just assert them that they were... They, that the, they well, were, they're appointed well, no, no, by... No, yeah. They're appointed by the government of the day, which yeah. was your government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secondly, they are accountable to the parliament. Right, okay. Right? Well, and there and is, it, from memory, is there not a committee that Joint deals... Committee. Joint, uh, a joint committee that that is has oversight, or to whom the auditor general, sure with whom the auditor general engages. But I think committee. you made an assertion that it's yeah. appointed by the prime minister's office. You ought withdraw that. That's not. Yeah, correct. I withdraw it. Yeah, Thank I, you. I meant as in that's something that the prime minister's office, and it was our office. But going forward, it's something that needs to be raised. Yeah, you know, I'm concerned about. Yeah. 
Public yeah. accounts and order. Thank you, Senator yeah. Burke. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the problem is I, I have difficulty getting committees up because we don't have the numbers. Okay, so this is the only means I've got to try and hold the Auditor General to account, right? Sure. So I could try and move a motion to get it an inquiry into this, but I doubt that you would vote for it. Se you didn't vote for <laughs> that. Senator, well, Senator yeah. Rennick, so um, Senator I, 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 you have a right as an elected senator to come to these estimates and ask questions, yep. uh, just as I have, you know, sure. as the minister, uh, I can respond. Uh, you have a right to come and ask the Auditor General about the issues which you raise. Um, uh, I don't, um, you know, I just make the point. These are um, independent statutory office, reports to the parliament, um, Auditor Generals, uh, you know, have set, reports have been at times difficult for governments of both political persuasions. Yep. Uh, I've had to deal with difficult Auditor General reports. Uh, I'm sure Senator Birmingham had to. So, mm. you know, sometimes, um, but, but that's the, the role in the, in the polity that this office plays. Okay. Okay, so if you don't agree with the work he's done, well, I think you are entitled to put that to him. I assume you've done that in previous estimates. Yeah, and he rejects it, no, and I well, disagree. Well, he obviously doesn't agree. And with he doesn't want to disclose the work papers, and, and I don't think that's right in the interests of the public disclosure. So, if <laughs> I was to move a motion to have an inquiry into this, would the Labor Party support an inquiry into no, the role of the Auditor General and what? Well, 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 you're asking me it, to whether you, or not you you yes, we don't have the numbers. Mate, well, hang on, I, I don't think you get your colleagues to support you. Yeah. Unless Senator Birmingham is going to tell you that. Would I agree with a, an inquiry into an independent statutory body, an officer, who already is subject to oversight by the parliament because you disagree with him? Probably not, Senator. Well, it's because he won't disclose the work papers. Well, I mean, it became a big it, political it, issue think, of the day. Sure. Uh, well, it was a political issue, but uh, I... What you're saying is, should the executive direct a statutory officer as to what they should provide to the Senate, a bit difficult. Mm. Okay, no, that's actually Senator, not what I'm saying. What Senator, I'm saying sorry, is, I no, think... No, but I so, so, sorry, I Senator slightly, Rennick, I no, thought... No, I'm not trying to have a go at you, Penny. I'm no, 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 no. And yeah. look, it's a, yeah. But I thought that's what, what you are saying. You're saying, can you direct him or can you make sure he gives us his working papers? I'm sorry, I thought that was the phrase. Well, OK, was. I, I want to be... I want the Parliament mm. to support that the Auditor General releases those working papers Okay, and, and we the, the coalition doesn't have the numbers by themselves to get up an inquiry into this, right? So I can have my colleagues support me, but it, like they supported me yesterday. The oversight committee. Um, um, I need to give the call back to Senator Birmingham briefly before we break for afternoon tea in okay, just fine. a moment. Yep. Oh, well, I'm, I'm happy for you to come and ask questions when he appears. Yeah, and, um, and they won't disclose work papers. Well, so I, we well don't have it interest. might be useful for him let's, to explain let's why. Just, for the Auditor General, um, I'd just like to confirm, according to a crikey.com article, uh, uh, former 100 uh, Hawke Keating staffers, where are they now? Uh, Grant here, yourself, was listed as working for Stuart West, mm -hmm. a Labor MP from 1986 to 1989. Is that correct or not? Crikey. Sounds correct. But I think the dates are correct, yes. That is correct? I think the dates that you, that you read out are... OK, correct. thank you. And, and did you disclose that when you applied for this role? I don't believe it was secret. Um, can't recall whether it was on my application form. I, that was sort of 35 years ago or 30 years ago in between that time and when I applied for this role, I'd held senior executive positions working in, in multiple jurisdictions multiple levels. Had Including in the role as Auditor General of New South Wales. But, but you'd still consider it relevant to partiality. I mean, most people, I think, would look at someone's past career going right back to the start. I mean, I know, you know, when you pre-select, you know, you, you go through pre-selection, we get vetted right back now to our, our youth. Um, I, I just find it, you don't think that you should have disclosed that? I, um, I can't, um, what I'm saying is I can't recall whether I disclosed it or not. Time. I might, don't believe that it's uh, so, not something that I've ever sought to hide. Um, okay, okay, that's fine. We're well, talking about seeking to hide things. I, I asked for the work papers in regards to the Leppington Triangle. The Auditor uh, General, the Audit Office, has declined to disclose those working papers. Uh, as Minister Wong herself said earlier on, the Parliament is the supreme authority 
in terms of accountability. Can you uh, please explain why you don't think it's appropriate in order uh, for you to disclose those working papers around uh, your determination of the value of the land at Leppington Triangle? Um, maybe we should start with that later uh, point. As you're aware, we never determined in any valuation to determine the value of the Leppington Triangle. Um, the valuations that were referred to in the report were carried out largely by the department, not by the audit office. So we we didn't do a valuation. Um, we reported on other people's valuations, which is, of course, the appropriate thing to do, because as you ought to be aware, under auditing standards, it's it's not it's not appropriate to audit your own work. Um, so it's not an activity that we undertook. So I'll start from there. Um, we've had a, a long-standing position which we've uh, raised in committee various committees over a a long period of time, we don't believe as an office that the disclosure of our working papers and evidence is in the public interest. Um, I think our most broadest um, exposition of that view of public interest was um, in the context of the Select Committee inquiry into sports grants where the committee wished to uh, ask for us to disclose our our audit evidence with respect to um, the activities leading to those decisions. And at that time, I wrote to uh, Senator Chisholm, the chair of the committee, setting out the public interest reasons why we think it's, it's not in the public interest for us to disclose or release all of our audit evidence. And I'm happy to provide that to the committee again, if you would like, and I believe We've given similar responses uh, with respect to questions that you've I mean, on by it, Thank you. Um, I, I do believe it's in the public interest. It became a political item, both in estimates in question time. Staffers were had the federal police raid their homes over, you know, alleged improprieties over things like meetings in coffee shops. Uh, now, you may disagree with that, but as, you know, Minister Wong said earlier on, Parliament is the supreme authority when it comes to disclosure, and I think that it's only appropriate that if a senator would like to review those working papers, that they're entitled to review those working papers and form their own opinion. So, you know, whether you like it or not, someone's you've got to be accountable to someone. I know you're an independent authority, but you're still accountable to parliament to a degree. And in the name of transparency, you should release that because it was a public interest. It was $30 million of public taxpayers' money. They are entitled to know the process by which um, you audited that because that, you know, that, that, you know, the, the, the audits that you do, um, it's very important that the public have confidence in the audits that you do and the processes that you follow. And you yourself are an auditor, so the question is who audits the auditors? And of course, the answer to that is Parliament. So I, I don't see how you have the right to withhold information that the Parliament has the right to scrutinise on behalf of the Australian people. Senator, we are accountable to Parliament and in the case of the audit you're speaking about, the Joint Committee of Public Accounts and Audit has undertaken an inquiry into that um, audit report um, as part of report number 492, Governance and Stewardship of Public Resources, which was tabled in April this year. And with respect to the, or the that particular audit, the committee, I'll read to you what the committee said, committee finds that the infrastructure that infrastructure did not demonstrate effective conduct of its activities relating to the Olympic and Triangle transaction, consistent with the PGPA Act and the Public Service Act. The committee concurs with the findings of the Auditor General's Report No. 9, 2021, and the sentential report that the Department did not exercise appropriate due diligence in its land acquisition and aspects of its operations, okay. and aspects of its operations fell short of ethical standards. It also agrees that the department did not undertake all reasonable steps to determine what a suitable cost would be for the government to acquire the property to demonstrate that the price paid for the property represented an efficient, effective, economical... Okay. Ethical well, well, that report's property. wrong because it contravenes AASB 13, paragraph 2729. Senator Wong, <clears throat> you can put that to him. I just would make the point 
as I understand what has occurred here, and I wasn't engaged in the JCPAA process, is that the, the views you've put have been considered and not accepted by the committee. Well, well are they qualified accountants? Are these people qualified so accountants? So the, you're right, but not the Auditor General or the committee? Well, I'm, I'm referring to the accounting standard. Okay. Best use is best use. I mean, it's there in black and white. Well, you maybe don't need to be I mean, if you scientist. wish to put the, but the yet account, again, if you want to put the accounting standard to the Auditor General, you're entitled to it, and he'll answer exactly. as he sees and, fit. And those procedures weren't applied. It's also valuation standards as well, sure. and it also comes to you know sending federal police around to staff who had done nothing wrong. But can I say yet again that you're now referring to your your opinion in that work, right? Did this committee look at your work papers or not? All of your work papers. Did they have unfettered access to all of your work papers? Yes or no? We, we made a submission to the committee which addressed um, the issues that you've raised, and the submission is available on the committee's website. That that so so, did, so sorry to interrupt you. Did they have access to all, all of your correspondence, all the minutes of your meetings? All, all the conversations that took place between your staff, department staff, and, and other, you know, political operatives, is that, was that made available to the committee, all of it? We, um, the committee didn't request those things, and if they had have requested so, so, our order of evidence, our position would have been similar to the same one we've sent it in the past. Um, at the end of the day, you're right, we are accountable to the parliament. That's right. And, and as you just said, you haven't provided all of the work papers to the parliament. I'm now asking for all work papers so that I can review all the work papers to look at what processes were followed. So I don't see why I don't have a right as an elected representative to get access to that data. As I said um, at the beginning of this, um, it's the view, it's my view that providing uh, the totality of audit evidence isn't in the public interest. And I've expressed that view um, to Parliament on a number of occasions and, and to committees who have been undertaking inquiries, and that's generally been accepted by those committees. Well, well I accept it's generally been accepted, I'm but in this case it hasn't been. I'm expressing that view again now. So, yeah, but you're, you're, that's your view. So no one's auditing your view. In someone else's view, which is myself, an elected representative, would like to see further data so that we can assess that information based on the fact that, you know, whoever came up with this conclusion didn't pay appropriate price, clearly didn't follow so, double A's. Uh, okay, so. just one more question, please. Now, there was another report recently released um, after the election where you've criticised the Morrison government for not rolling out the vaccines fast enough. Did you have anyone, a biochemist or anyone that was uh, specialised in, in vaccine management to, to form that opinion? What that audit report says is that the Department of Health did not, uh, in the rollout of the vaccines, did not uh, meet the performance targets that the government has asked it to meet. Thank you, Auditor General. Right. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.